Hi there, welcome back to St. Thomas Aquinas. For everyone, I'm Dave Palmer, and thank you so much for being with me in these videos as we move through the Summa Theologia and the exciting thing, I'll explain this a little bit better in a moment, but we're almost halfway through the Summa, and I do want to tell you that if you are just watching this video for the first, this is the first one that you're, you're watching, go back and watch the other ones because it all builds, okay? It's kind of hard to just enter halfway through the Summa without understanding what Thomas said about God or human nature or angelic nature. Okay, it's okay, no problem. Keep watching this one. Hopefully you enjoy it, but go back and watch one a day or two a day or five a day or binge watch all of them. I've, I've heard some people are doing that. You're just kind of watching all of them. Hopefully you're enjoying them, but it's really important, okay, because we're almost halfway through the Summa. This is the part of the Summa where we are going to be learning about habits and virtue and sin. In this particular video, habits and a little bit of an introduction into virtues, but uh, these are all grouped together in the Summa, and it's really, really cool. So let me uh, move on to the uh, the next slide shows you that after habits, virtues, and sin, we are going to learn about the law, one of my favorite parts of the Summa, where we talk about the four kinds of law. I think I've referred to them before in one of the previous videos. Not going to give it away right now, but it's really cool. And then grace and merit. Okay, we cannot be saved without grace, and so it's really important. And what role does merit have in our salvation? Okay, Protestants and Catholics do not agree on this necessarily, but it is really interesting. So habits, virtues, and sin is what we're going to learn about. Specifically right now, habits. When you think of a habit, a good habit, a bad habit, what comes to mind? What about the habit of smoking? Okay, maybe maybe you're a smoker. I, I don't smoke. I maybe a cigar every now and then, but I'm not I'm not a smoker, but that certainly can be habitual. It means it's something you don't really think about. You just do it because you've you have you have either developed an addiction or it's just something you you have a habit of having something in your hand, right? Uh, one thing that I can relate to is this, all right, biting nails. That's a habit people get into. They don't say, okay, I think I'm going to start biting my nails now. It's habitual. They don't think about it. Not all habits are bad. We have the habit of studiousness, okay? At some point in most people's life, they, if they're, you know, pursuing an education or a bachelor's degree or master's degree or doctorate or whatever, you just get to the point where you just enjoy studying and it comes naturally to you and it's not a battle every time you pick up the book and study you've developed a good habit of studiousness. Okay, that can be a habit. And then we all have habits of sleep. Now, I've gotten pretty good at this lately, where I, without an alarm clock, I wake up the, at, when I need to wake up every morning. It's I haven't been the, that way. I'm 53 now. It took me 53 years to develop this habit. I used to be bad about staying up late and then oversleeping and getting you know getting even getting to work late. And uh, anyways, <laughs> it's I didn't always have this habit, but I do now. And so uh, these are habits. What are habits? It's habitual. It's something we don't think about. We just we just do it. Okay, it's 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 acquired over time. And so uh, we're going to focus on this. And uh, Thomas asks in now ST1 to 49 two, remember that this is uh, the, the Summa Theologia, the first part of the second part of the Summa. It's called Secu Suprema Secunda. The Summa has, depending on how you count it, four parts, five parts. Uh, you might even argue six parts, but that's kind of a tough argument. Prima, uh, prima pars, the first part. We've already done that. That's God and human nature and angels and that kind of stuff, right? Now you get prima secunda. That's what we're in right now. It's uh, general laws of morality and the virtues and, uh, you know, an introduction to, you know, grace and merit and, and, and law, like, like I mentioned a moment ago. And then you have secunda secunde, <laughs> the second part of the second part, and that's more specifically about the different kinds of virtues, the theological, the cardinal virtues. And then you get into tertia pars, and that's really great because they introduce Jesus for the first time, the sacraments, the last things. And then you have the supplement, which is after Thomas dies, and then you have a little tiny section at the end of the Summa called the appendices, which is a few articles about, a few questions, I should say, about uh, purgatory, all right? But right now we're in prima secunda of uh, and whether habit is a distinct species of quality. Thomas says the philosopher, Aristotle, defines habit as a disposition whereby someone is disposed well or ill. Good habits, bad habits, right? And he says that by habits we are directed well or ill in reference to the passions. 
Remember the passions? Remember the concupiscible, the irascible passions, fear and love and uh, anger and hope, despair, daring. Remember that whole section? Go back and watch it, okay, if you haven't done, haven't done that. For when the mode is suitable to the thing's nature, it has the aspect of good, and when it is unsuitable, it has the aspect of evil. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you walk into a restaurant, okay, and you sit down and you see this. You look over, and this guy is now using his hands to eat, and he's eating with his mouth, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what, what a... What a slob. I mean, this this is not, you wouldn't maybe say this, but you'd be thinking this isn't suitable to his nature. And you walk outside the restaurant and you see this. Another creature doing the exact same thing, you wouldn't even think twice about it. Why? Because eating with the mouth without hands is suitable to a dog's nature. It's not suitable to a human nature. And that's why one disgusts you and the other one you don't even think about. It's two creatures different natures, all right? Since nature is the first object of consideration in anything. That's a really, really important sentence right there. Oh, half a sentence. For this reason, habit is reckoned as the first species of quality, all right? So habits are very important as we move towards our final end, which is God, right? I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I'm going to get to that in just a second. Whether human virtue is a habit, Okay, when we have developed virtues like um, helping the downtrodden, okay, here's a guy that's helping somebody that looks very, very poor. Some of us may be in a habit of saying, yeah, whatever, not my problem, not going to deal with it. Some just naturally want to help people who need our help, right? I think, and it, but it's, it's more conducive to human nature to help. So if somebody has a hardened heart and they're not going to help somebody, that's not virtuous and that's not habitual and that's not natural to our nature because we are naturally good. Thomas makes it very, uh, working at a soup kitchen, okay? Uh, this guy and this young lady, maybe they got into a habit of just every Thursday night they, they work at the soup kitchen or every Saturday, okay? It's just something they just do. That's virtuous. That's a good thing, right? Virtue denotes a certain perfection of a power. Now, a thing's perfection is considered chiefly in regard to its end. Okay, I'm going to highlight that because that's an extremely important part of the Summa, a word in the Summa. I don't know if I told you this, but I went through the Summa one time and I circled every time Thomas refers to end. And believe me, hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of times in the Summa, he talks about the end. That's what it's all about. Remember the fifth the, um, proof of the existence of God, teleology. Remember governance of the world, predestination, providence. We are being guided towards God, but we have to develop habits and we have to direct ourselves because we have free will, right? And that's why we need to develop good habits. But the end of a power is act, wherefore power is said to be perfect according as it is determinate to its act. All right, so what is our end? Our end is heaven. So every small thing that we do needs to direct us towards our end. Remember, does the final cause have an aspect of the, uh, of, the of, 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 of our end, right? Um, that That's important. It's important to know that everything we do from waking up in the morning to the way we treat people, to the way we do our job, to the way we interact with society and our wives or our kids or our friends has to do with our final end. Now, there are some powers which are of themselves determined into these acts. For instance, the active natural powers. And therefore, these natural powers are in themselves called virtues. Now, here's something that the way I interpret Thomas, and I, I think I'm right about this. Thomas is calling something like a bird building a nest a virtue because the bird doesn't think about it, but it's a good act. They just are in a habit of building nests. Just like when we do something virtuous, we're not thinking about it, okay? If we had to think about it and, and struggle to do it, it wouldn't be a virtue. But the rational powers which are proper to man are not determined into one particular action, but are inclined indefinitely to many, and they are determined into acts by means of habits. So those, those young people that went out to feed the homeless on Thursday night, they could have stayed home and watched Thursday night football. They could have gone out to a bar, depending on how old they are, if they're of age. They could have done a lot of things. What did they do? They decided to go help the homeless because it was a habit for them, right? Therefore, human virtues are habits, all right? Uh, here's a great quote, quote by Augustine. Virtue is a good quality of the mind by which we live righteously, of which no one can make bad use. Okay, you can't, you can't have a bad virtue. You can have a bad habit. You can't have a bad virtue, which God works in us. Okay, there's the element of God 
without us. For virtue is man's goodness. Okay, he, God works in us without us because, again, it's, it's habitual. We're not thinking about it. We can acquire them. We can work on it. But once we got them, God's working through us, especially with the, some of the higher level virtues, which we'll talk about, especially theological virtues, which we cannot get in our own. But getting way ahead of myself. Uh, for virtue is man's goodness, since virtue it is that makes its subject good. And then this great quote from Augustine, he who created thee without thee will not justify thee without thee. Great quote by Augustine. Here's a picture of him, right? We have free will. Okay, God created us. He, he, he kind of pulls us to himself and he gives us every means to which to get back to him to acquire our final end. But he's not going to force us to do it because that would be destructive of our nature because we are intellectual creatures by nature. We have free will. And if God um, pulled us to do it towards himself without allowing us to pull away, then we would no longer have free will. All right, that's it. Habits, virtues, and sins. In the next video, we'll start talking about the particular kinds of virtues like intellectual and moral, the difference. We're going to talk about cardinal virtues and theological virtues and sin and vice and all kinds of great stuff. So hang in there. Again, go back and watch the other videos. Please subscribe, share this with your friends. This is really important stuff because this there's nothing more important than coming to know God. That's what the Summa is about. Epistemology, remember that? Coming to know God, being directed towards God, teleology, and our response to God's initiative. And the Summa is just awesome. Okay, so if you like it, comment. Let's start a conversation. Thanks to, to those of you who have already done that. And um, send it to your friends, okay? And say, hey, subscribe. This guy is teaching the Summa, and he's, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody. I'm Dave Palmer, and this is St. Thomas Aquinas for everyone. And I appreciate you watching. God bless you.